Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we are checking out a normal sized machine, the Ender 3 Pro S1. Is it any good? Can it dethrone the Ender 3 Pro as the new starter machine? Let's find out, but before we get started, roll those credits. Okay, so first and foremost, legal stuff out of the way. This machine was sent to us by Geek Buyer. There is an affiliate link to buy this in the video description. If you use that affiliate link, which you do not have to use, but if you use it, we get a small commission on the machines that are sold. We were not paid to do this review by either Geek Buyer or Creality, and this is not a, this is not a video that they have sanctioned or approved or anything else. The opinions expressed in this are our own. They have nothing to do with Creality, and Geek Buyer has no creative control over what we say. So, with that out of the way, what are we looking at? This is a feature-rich Ender 3 Pro, right? This is the S1 Pro. This is with the new Sprite Extruder. Now, let's just run through some of the specs of this machine. So we've got a build volume of 220 by 220 by 270. We have dual Z axis. They have dual Z motors, and they are synchronized with a belt at the top. We have a Flexible magnetic removable PEI sheet. The hot end will go up to 300 degrees. We have a CR touch. We have belt tensioners on the X and the Y. We also have a nice little handle for the bed so you can pull it forwards. And we have a touch screen that's actually a touch screen. We have the light bar at the top. We have a filament runout sensor up here. And who could forget, we have the little drawer. Let's just be clear about what this machine is. This machine is an Ender 3 Pro with pretty much every community mod that has ever been done, right? Direct drive that will go to 300 degrees, auto bed leveling, touch screen, better part cooling, dual Zs, a light, Everything on here is something that a community member has gone out and designed and has now been uh, and has now been appropriated by Creality into the design. This is what most people's Ender threes end up looking like after six months to a year of them modifying it and printing different files and trying different things out. Out of the box, it's actually a really good printer. The problem is that the reason why the Ender 3 Pro is such a tantalizing product to the vast majority of new starters is the price. You can pick up an Ender 3 Pro right now for around £140 brand new, and you can pick them up for less than £100 second hand. This machine on the Creality website is currently £479, and it's £529 when it's not on sale. You can pick them up for slightly cheaper, around £400 if you buy them off of Amazon. And what you get is a very quick to set up, very easy to use 3D printer. I will say that we've worked on Sprite extruders before. They are a little complicated sometimes to do any maintenance on. This is, however, as I said before, this is where most people's Ender 3s end up. Once they've been printing for six months, they want to make their machine better, so they add a belt tensioner, or they change out for a direct drive, or they put auto bed leveling on, or they change out the mainboard for a silent one, which, to be fair, is actually stock now anyway. Um, they might put on a dual Z-axis kit, or they put some LED strip on it, or they print the little drawers. This is a community built machine that Creality have gone out, commercially packaged, and are now selling back to the very community that is responsible for designing it to be the way that it is. With no credit for the most part, 
to anybody who designed a large number of those parts. Okay. Um, it does have an all-in-one uh, tool head connector that clicks in very reassuringly. They've also gone through and reinforced this um, braided cable quite nicely. Um, there is a, uh, there's like a, a clip thing that holds this bit of wire up. I haven't used it yet. Um, they've reinf I say they've reinforced the, um, the strain relief on the bed. They've done a really nice job and you're paying for it. The point of a lot of those community mods was you took a basic machine and what you made at the end was better than the sum of its parts. You managed to print upgrades and print changes so that you could customize your machine to perform really well. Um, this is buying that machine off the shelf, which for the most part kind of eliminates the point of buying an Ender 3 Pro. The, the, the point is, is that you buy that machine so that you can learn, so that you dismantle it and you put it back together again and you, you know where all the parts are, you know how, you know how firmware flashing starts to work, you know how, how extruders go together and all the different component parts in there. This is trying very hard to be an out of the box, off you go 3D printer. And to be fair to it, for the most part, it is. I think it kind of goes against the point of owning one though. For me, the purpose of recommending Ender 3 Pros is that people learn. They learn how to 3D print, how their printer works, how they need to tweak it, what they need to do, what, what causes different issues. And there's so much support out there because so many people have had Ender 3 Pros that it's very rare that you're able to break your Ender in a unique way where you can't go into the community and find 50 or 100 other people who've had exactly the same problem you've had and how to solve it. We'll take a look at a second in how some of the prints come out because to be clear, it prints really well. And I'm not criticizing the machine for being good. It is good. It's not a machine you're then going to play with. There's really very little to do on this machine other than enclose it um, that would mean that you would get anything extra. You could play about with part cooling a little bit, um, you know, so that you could improve some of the overhangs. We'll show you those in a second. Um, but for the most part, you get this machine out of the box, it starts printing, and it will print as well on day one as it prints on day 365. It's lost its roots, its soul. For me, the soul of an Ender 3 is that you buy it knowing that you have to play about with it. If you want a machine that is going to not require any maintenance and you're willing to spend this kind of money, so when it's not on sale from Creality, 527 pounds for me, Spend a little bit extra, about £100, and you've got yourself a Bamboo Labs P1P. Now, is this as good as a P1P? I challenge the answer is probably no. I challenge that the answer is that this is a machine that was born out of a tinkerer's brain. You could add in webcams and octoprint and clipper and everything else in between. Can't do that with this machine. The screen, the touch screen that works on this machine won't work with clipper. So that means you're throwing away your touch screen basically. You know, it's, it, there's, there's, there's a lot that, there's a lot of community driven mods that are a part of this. And that was the point of those mods. You as a person got to pick what you wanted and you made your own customized machine. And this lacks a bit of soul for me. I'll show you the print quality. And honestly, the print quality is really good. It does very well out of the box, but you don't get to play with it. There's, there's something about when you have an Ender 3 or when you have a cheaper machine, let's not even just say Ender 3s, when you have a cheaper machine and you get good prints out of it, you feel like you've earned them. They're your battle badges. Do you know what I mean? They are your, they are your, I did this. I made this machine do this. Look how well I've tuned it. There's a degree of pride. 
there's a, I made this modification and this modification and, and here I am at a better printer, at a better print at, at, you know, at whatever I wanted it to be. And this machine lacks a lot of that. There's almost a point where you feel like you've not earned some of the prints that it, that it churns out. And again, to be clear, the print quality is pretty good. It's pretty good for a machine at this price, for a bed slinger, it's doing a solid job. It's printing at about 60 millimeters a second. It can go faster, um, but we were doing 60 millimeters a second. It's printing at a 0.02, it's pointing at a 0.2 layer height. Um, and you know, and as I said, it's doing a good job. We used some of the Akuma Mods red and black filament and it looks stunning. Really cool effects. Need to tweak retraction a little bit, but the stock profile that comes in Cura is very serviceable. You don't have to play about with it that much. And that I think is where this machine falls down. But before we get into that, Let's take a look at some of the prints. Okay, so we've got a few things here. So let's start with the obligatory calibration cube. So you can actually see, there we go. You can see that that printed really, really nicely. You've got that textured build plate surface there and that has come out really nice. 60 millimeters a second, 0 0.2 layer height, a very respectable cube. And we also did, in a grey, a Benchy. So a little bit of, there we go, a little bit of striation in the uh, filament. I think the filament's just a little bit old. But overall, again, really, really nice there. You can see it did a fairly good job on the overhangs, did a good job on the smokestack. Everything on that came out really quite nicely. Did an okay job on the sort of, on the stepping down. It's a little rough but a 0.2 layer height is what you should expect. You can see in here a little bit of stringing, so a little bit of work to do on the retraction, but overall not bad. We come to vase mode. So this, again, a really stunning vase. That Akuma Mods red and black looks absolutely stunning. Really, really cool. Again, you can see some issues with retraction in there, but there's two layers to this. There's this top layer here and there's an inner layer um, just behind that, you can see, there you go, there's an inner layer just in there, a really cool vase and a really cool lattice effect. Did ourselves a lattice pyramid, which again came out really, really nicely. Done a really good job there. There's no cleanup on these or anything, these are just how they came off the printer. First layer's lovely, really, really good. This is one of the overhang tests we like to do, and you can see that this is printing completely in midair in these sections. So it's a real test of part cooling to see how it does with those, um, and a real test, a real bridging test, sorry, not an overhang test. And you can see that bridging wise, not amazing. These are with stock settings, stock setup, no tweaking, needs a bit of work. We've then done the Articulated Dragon, which in the red and black looks really, really cool. Everything here moves freely. You can see it moves about really, really nicely. Done a really good job. Retractions aren't really that bad. You can see, if we go here, come on. So you can see here, Little bit of stringing on some of these parts, on some of these spikes at the top. But overall, a really, really nice print. Super, super flexible. Really, really nice. We flipped this printer over to print on the carbon, on the, uh, on the metal side. And that's what got us these. So these are some phone holders. They just go out like that. And then this little bit here, pops up, he said, just pops up like that. And then you could dock your phone in it. Did them in a variety of sizes. So this file we actually found originally on the, uh, it was a stock one that came on the Bamboo, on the Bamboo Lab Carbon um, X1. But, um, but again, you get them in three sizes, all the way down to little ones. The first layer on that um, stainless steel side is really, really nice. 
little sticky just from where we used um, the 3D lac, but overall pretty cool. Nice little prints, didn't take long, only a few layers. Really, really good. So yeah. So as you can see, the prints are pretty good. Okay, the overhangs aren't amazing. It's part calling, could use a little bit of work and I'm sure there will be some community mods out there already, I haven't looked, um, to, do some, to do some better part calling for a Sprite Extruder. I'm sure there's already some stuff that does a better job of that. The problem I come back to is for me, it lacks a bit of soul. If I want a machine that I don't have to play about with, a machine that I'm going to put in a farm, I'm not buying this. I'm buying a, a P1P or I'm spending more money and I'm getting a Prusa or I'm getting a, a Bamboo Carbon X1 or I'm getting, you know, an Ultimaker or, you know, you start going up and up and up in price. This is a machine that if you are starting out, it isn't bad, but I still don't think it's necessarily the first machine you should get. I think that there is a huge amount of value in having to fix your render three, in taking it apart, putting it back together again, understanding how it works. I think there's value in that. If you've already got an Ender three pro and you've done all of that, this could very easily be your next machine. I think this makes a perfect second printer. I don't necessarily think it should be your first. And I think that's just because it lacks that soul. You don't, you don't use an Ender 3 Pro. You earn it. You go through the blood, sweat and tears. You change the hot ends. You do the mods. You do the upgrades. You go through it all. Ender 3 Pros now, for the most part, will actually print okay out of the box. But there's things you can do that means that it's your Ender 3 Pro. You change out the bed springs or you change out the bed surface or you change out, you know, you move over to a direct drive or whatever, but you're making those mods and you're making those changes. And this just lacks a lot of that. And this just lacks a lot of that. Overall, I'd give the machine an eight out of 10. I think this is a perfect example of a second printer that you should get. If you've already had an Ender 3 or you've had another machine, you don't want the hassle of learning. You just want to pick a machine up, off you go, go and do it. And you've got nearly 500 pounds to spend, absolutely fine. Go and buy one. I think you'll be very happy with it. I think you'll enjoy it. I th again, I mean, you know, we did these, we did these, um, these phone, um, these phone holders. I actually did these because I originally printed some on the Bamboo Labs and they came out absolutely stunning. And I just wanted to see how well they would do on uh, on the Ender 3 Pro and, 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 and on the S1. And, and frankly, they, they again, they came out really, really nicely. Um, I printed on the uh, I printed on the flat side of the uh, of the of the PEI sheet and came out really flat. Like it came out really, really nicely. They, they, they all did exactly what they were supposed to. Um, the machine does what it says on the tin. It's not going to light your world on fire. It is not a replacement for the Ender 3 Pro because the Ender 3 Pro is your entry level machine. It is there specifically for brand new people for the, to the hobby to learn for the cheapest amount of money possible. That's not what this is. That's not what this is. And frankly, if you want a machine that requires you to touch nothing, get a Bamboo Labs P1P. But if you want a machine that is your second machine, you've already had an Ender 3 Pro or something like that, a GTEK A10 or, you know, one of, one of the, one of men, like a longer LK4 or something like that, and you want to move up to the next level, this is a good fit. I think it comes in in a very crowded place in the market, but it's a good fit. It'll do what you need it to do. And it'll make a fairly good job of it. For me, I want the soul. I want to earn it. I want to tinker. I want to play about. 
and you can't. And that just feels like it's not holding to its roots. But there we go. That's the review. That's what I think of it. You've seen the print quality. If you want to pick up one yourself and you want to help support the channel, check out the Geek Buyer link in the video description. If you don't want to uh, use that link, that's absolutely fine. Check out Geek Buyer or Creality or Amazon and go and buy one of these. Um, you do not have to use our affiliate link if you do not want to. Geek Buyer are still a really good platform to use. They have some of the cheapest prices. It's one of the reasons we wanted to work with them. So still a really good option to go for those guys. But ultimately, you buy it from wherever you want if you want to get one. Have a great time. Enjoy your 3D printing. Stay safe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one.